Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse, and this lesson I'm going to talk about congruent triangles. Uh, congruent triangles are triangles that are the same size and same shape. Uh, now remember, congruent basically means equal, so we're talking about equal triangles. And these triangles are going to be equal or congruent because they have the same size and same shape. Uh, I've got two different examples of two sets of congruent triangles. Uh, the first one here, I indicated that sides were congruent to each other by using a ruler. I indicated that angles were congruent to each other because uh, I use a protractor. Um, and so if you look around here, all these sides and angles have a, a matching corresponding angle. For example, 114 degrees has a matching pair over here, 4 centimeters and 4 centimeters and all the way around. Uh, but you don't always have to use numbers to indicate sides are congruent to each other and angles are congruent to each other. Uh, in math, we can also use little symbols. Uh, for example, this side here has one tick mark. So does this side right here. So I know side RS is congruent to side XY because they each have one tick mark. Likewise, uh, side RT has two tick marks. Side XZ has two tick marks. So that means that those two sides are going to be congruent to each other. So tick marks are used to indicate that sides are congruent to each other. Uh, angles are congruent, are marked to be congruent to each other with little arcs. Notice this is bending a little bit. So angle S has one arc. Angle Y has one arc. Since they have the same number of arcs here, that means that these two triangles are, uh, these two angles are going to be congruent to each other. If I look around here at, at angle R, R has two tick mark. Oh, sorry, two arcs. Uh, angle X has two t uh, two arcs. And so, since these each have uh, two arcs, that means that these two angles are going to be congruent. Uh, and so, just keep that in mind. Uh, we don't always use numbers to indicate sides and angles are congruent. Sometimes we use uh, tick marks and and arcs. Uh, so, moving on. Uh, it says on this statement, all triangles have three angles and three sides. Uh, I don't care where you live. I don't care uh, if you uh, are from Jupiter. Uh, no matter what, every triangle is always going to have three angles and three sides. Uh, it says if two triangles have all three angles and all three sides corresponding to the other triangle, then the triangles are congruent. In other words, if all three angles and all three sides have a matching angle and matching side on the other triangle, and they all six of these angles and sides has a matching pair, then that means those two triangles are congruent. Uh, what I mean here is five centimeters and five centimeters, four centimeters and four centimeters, uh, 7.8 centimeters and 7.8 centimeters. These sides all have a matching corresponding side. So those all three sides have a set of matching corresponding sides. If I look at the angles, I have uh, 29 degrees and 29 degrees. I have 114 degrees and 114 degrees. I also have 37 degrees and 37 degrees. Since all these angles have a matching corresponding angle, uh, that means uh, that all three of those angles are going to be have a matching corresponding pair. And if all three of these angles and all three of these sides here have a matching set on another triangle, that means those two triangles are congruent. Uh, for example, if I looked, if I change this to like a 4.1 centimeters, 4 centimeters and 4.1 centimeters doesn't match up. Since these sides don't match up anymore, that means that these triangles cannot be congruent. Uh, but since they do match up, that means they are congruent. Now these over here, I have two sets of uh, two different triangles here that, that are not congruent. Uh, if I just look around here, let's look at this, uh, the three centimeters. Uh, I don't see another three centimeters anywhere over here. So that means that these two triangles are not congruent. If any one angle or one side does not have a matching corresponding angle or side on the other triangle, then it is automatically not a congruent triangle. So just think about that. Uh, moving on here, it says if triangle RST is congruent to triangle XYZ, the vertices used to name the triangles correspond to each other in the order of how they're written. What this means is uh, each one of these letters here indicates a vertice or one of the corners of the triangle. I have R, S, and T here. R, S, and T. Over here I have X, Y, and Z. Uh, that matches up with one of the vertices or corners of the other triangle. We have a vertice X, vertice Y, or vertice Z. Uh, now this says the vertices used to name the triangles correspond to each other in the order of how they were written. And so R comes first here. Since R comes first here and X comes first here, that means that these two vertices are going to be equal to each other. So that means that this vertice and this vertice are equal to each other. And if we look, I have two arcs here, I have two arcs here. These two uh, vertices are congruent to each other. Uh, now moving on here, if we were to look at the next letter, it says uh, we have S. S comes second here. Y comes second here. Since S is second here, this vertice matches up with this vertice. 
And then finally, if I look at the third letter, since T comes third here and Z comes third here, that means that this vertice T and this vertice T, uh, Z, this little corner here, these two corners or, or vertices are going to match up. And so these guys always match up in the order in which they're written. And so that's something that we're going to use on the next slide here. Uh, so let's look over here. It says, now that we know the vertices uh, correspond with each other, we can use the vertices to find the corresponding angles and sides. And so if I look here, this vertice R is representing this angle R. This vertice X is representing this angle X. So this vertice and this vertice match up. So that means that these two angles are actually going to be congruent to each other. And that's the statement that I have here. So since this comes first and this one comes first in the statement, that means that those angles are going to be congruent to each other. Uh, since S comes second and Y comes second, that means that angle S and angle Y are going to be congruent to each other. And then finally here, since T comes third and Z comes third, that means that angle T and angle Z are going to be congruent to each other. So the order of the letters here is really important. R and X are congruent to each other. Angle S and angle Y are congruent to each other. Angle T and angle Z are congruent to each other. You can also use the vertices to indicate which sides are congruent. If I look here, R and S, this vertice R and this vertice S, if I connect those points, that gives me this side here. So this is side RS. Well, that comes first, that comes second. X comes first, Y comes second. So if I look at X and I go to Y here, that makes this side here. So these two statements here, these, these two letters match up with these two letters, that indicates that these two sides are going to be congruent to each other. And so I have uh, side RS or line segment RS is congruent to line segment uh, XY. Uh, now very important here, I could not have said RS is congruent to YX. You want the order to match up here, at least for my students I do. So R corresponds with Y, so, uh, sorry, R corresponds with X, so R comes first, X comes first. I didn't mix and match it and say uh, Y, because if I say Y is congruent to R, that's wrong, because Y is second and R is first. Uh, your teacher might be a little bit different, uh, but that's what I'm doing with my students here. And so moving on here, we have, um, whoops, let me erase this. We have, uh, if I look at these two letters here, S comes second, T comes third, Y comes second, and Z comes third. And so these, si uh, these vertices, uh, S and T, are helping create this side, ST. That corresponds with Y and Z, which is Y and Z down here. And so line segment ST is going to be congruent to line segment YZ. And then uh, the last one we have, we have, if I look at the first one and the third one here, in other words, I'm ignoring the S. And if I do look at the first and the third one here, I'm ignoring the Y. Then that tells me that from R to T, R to T creates side R to T, and R corresponds with X, and T corresponds with Z, and so X and Z is going to be uh, congruent as side uh, R to T, and that's the statement I have here. And so it's real important, the lettering, uh, the order of the letters in the statements here indicates which sides and angles are going to be congruent to each other. And so let's move on to the very last slide I have on here. Uh, it says, uh, definition of congruent triangles. If you are um, doing proofs in geometry, uh, my students are doing proofs in geometry, uh, if you have, it says, if two triangles are congruent, if and only if their corresponding parts are congruent, if you have two triangles that are congruent to each other, you can use the CPCTC uh, rule to indicate that these triangles are congruent. If you write down CPCTC on a proof, you're indicating that two triangles are congruent because their corresponding parts are congruent. And so that's just something to think about. I've got additional example problems that I would love to do on this video, uh, but my video keeps getting about 15 minutes long. And so if you want to go to my website, dowshouse.com, look under the second and third six weeks worth of videos. Uh, no, it's just under the second six weeks worth of videos under congruent triangles. I will have additional problems where I will solve uh, this problem right here, and I'll also be solving uh, this problem right here. So anyways, I wish I could do this. I just keep running out of time. But anyways, hopefully this helps you understand what congruent triangles are, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.